Microsoft's Internet Explorer has been around for over 15 years. What started life as a simple Mosaic clone is now the most popular web browser in the world due to a combination of clever marketing and monopolistic business practices. After squeezing main rival Netscape completely out of the market in the late 90s, only now is IE's dominance being challenged by rivals Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome and Apple Safari. To illuminate the progress Microsoft made in each version of Internet Explorer, every version of the browser was installed on a combination of virtual and real machines, and various websites were tried in each version to compare rendering ability. Internet Explorer 1.0 was released on August 16, 1995 for Windows 3.1, 95 and NT. Windows 95 was selected for this experiment as it was Microsoft's primary consumer operating system at the time. The original release of Windows 95 was required as Microsoft started bundling IE 2.0 starting with OEM Service Release 1. The installation procedure offered to set up Windows email and network settings and created the once ubiquitous The Internet icon on the desktop. The user interface is very simple in appearance and barely deviates from the standard Windows application design paradigm. Trying to load the default homepage, msn.com, brought up an error page, as did many of the other sites tried. As the HTTP protocol hasn't really changed much since 1995, some investigation was done to find out why this was. Using the Wireshark packet sniffing tool, HTTP sessions from Internet Explorer 1.0 were compared to those from Internet Explorer 8.0. As it happens, Internet Explorer 1.0 does not send the host header that many sites rely on to distinguish between several websites on the same server. Rather annoyingly, one of the servers that uses these virtual hosts runs the ACID tests website, so the tests could not be accessed directly. The HTML and supporting files for the ACID tests were downloaded on another computer and transferred across. Since the ACID tests are for checking compliance to the CSS standard, and CSS came out a full year after Internet Explorer 1, the results were rather poor. Only the first ACID test has any parsable content in it. The third ACID test actually made the program crash. The few websites still on the net that don't make use of CSS, JavaScript, frames or tables rendered reasonably well. The best page in the universe looked almost flawless, and the Drudge Report, despite using tables, was more or less browsable. Not much had changed in Internet Explorer 2.0, as it was released only two months after 1.0. Table support means that many websites look more like they should, but there is still no CSS, so the ACID tests are meaningless, although ACID 3 claims to get to 93 out of 100. Furthermore, the host header is still not sent, so virtually hosted sites are still inaccessible. For Internet Explorer 3, Windows 95 OSR2 was installed, as it supports VMware's SVGA drivers, allowing a 32-bit color depth to be selected. OSR2 came with Internet Explorer 3.0 by default, as proclaimed loudly on the startup screen. The decision to bundle Internet Explorer with Windows resulted in a long-running antitrust lawsuit against Microsoft, but ensured it achieved near-total dominance of the browser market for a decade. The interface of IE3 was much prettier than previous versions, with an interesting swirly background behind the browser buttons and a layout that clearly set a design trend that continued through to Internet Explorer 6. It supported most of the essential features of the then-dominant Netscape Navigator, including frames, JavaScript and finally the host header, so most modern websites at least display something. It also boasted a number of features lacking in Netscape, such as CSS. This meant the ACID tests had some sort of meaning, However, none of them even slightly resembled their reference renderings. Internet Explorer 4 was controversial when released due to the optional desktop update component, which made Windows 95 look very much like Windows 98. This had various performance and usability issues, and the computing press was not very keen on it at the time. The desktop update also installed a channel bar, which was sort of like an early version of RSS, in that the user could pick a website to subscribe to and the information would be automatically downloaded. Appearance-wise, very little had changed since IE3, although the rather fetching background behind the browser buttons had been removed. Not much had changed in terms of functionality either, most of the additional features came from the bundling of programs such as Outlook Express and FrontPage. There wasn't much difference in rendering of most websites compared to IE3, but the first ACID test now bears some resemblance to the reference rendering, and the ACID2 test at least has some of the right colours in it. ACID3, on the other hand, just throws up a bunch of JavaScript errors. 
Internet Explorer 5 was released in 1999, and by this time ran on a surprisingly wide variety of platforms. Windows 3.1 through 2000, macOS versions 7 through 10, Sun Solaris, and HP UX. Compare this to IE9, which only runs on Windows Vista or 7. Many new features were introduced with this version, including perhaps most notably the XML HTTP request API. This is the feature that led to the rise of the so-called Web 2.0. Most modern websites were browsable to some extent in IE5, and at least vaguely resembled their appearance in modern browsers. The first ACID test rendered almost completely correctly, other than some spacing issues, but ACID2 was still pretty shapeless. ACID3's JavaScript actually ran, and made it all the way to the sixth test before stopping. Windows XP was chosen as a platform for Internet Explorer 6, which was released in 2001. By the time of its release, Microsoft had well won the browser wars, and as a result saw no reason to release another browser until 2007. IE6's improvements, other than the slightly more colourful interface, were mostly in the area of standards compliance. CSS and JavaScript support especially were much improved. This meant the first ACID test now renders perfectly, but ACID2 and ACID3 still barely work. Other websites mostly rendered correctly, which is to be expected as until a few months ago Internet Explorer 6 was still being widely used, and even as of March 2011 still accounts for roughly 16% of all web traffic. Internet Explorer 7 was considered long overdue by the press and users alike, being released six years after IE6, and added features that had been present in other browsers for years. A new interface with tabbed browsing was probably the most visible of these features, but many under the hood changes were made to bring it up to date with six years worth of rapidly evolving web standards. These changes were still not enough to satisfy the demanding ACID 2 and 3 tests, neither of which rendered properly, especially ACID 3, which actually did better in IE 5. Internet Explorer 8 was released only two years after version 7, demonstrating Microsoft's commitment to a more regular release schedule. When first started, it offered a choice of search providers rather than just defaulting to Microsoft's Bing. This is an unusual step for the company, and is likely the result of one of many lawsuits brought against Microsoft by the EU. Also new is the Accelerator feature, which is a selection-based search that also allows different providers to be chosen. The interface hadn't changed much since IE7, but many improvements had been made in terms of standards compliance. ACID 2 rendered perfectly like ACID 1, but ACID 3 only scored 12 out of 100 on the test system. Others have apparently managed scores as high as 20. Finally, Internet Explorer 9 was installed. As Windows XP is no longer supported, a computer running Windows 7 was obtained from a reluctant flatmate. For some reason, on first startup, it didn't offer to change the search engine and just defaulted to Bing. The interface vaguely resembles IE8, but is much more streamlined and is clearly taking a few hints from Google Chrome. The rendering engine has been much improved, with hardware acceleration for graphics and text, and greatly improved CSS support. The ACID 3 test got to 95 out of 100, which is further than the latest stable version of Firefox. Also, support for HTML5 has been added, as Microsoft are very keen to point out with a flashy presentation featuring a motor show. That concludes this experiment. I hope you found this video informative and that it put the recent release of Internet Explorer 9 into a historical context.